So back in 2002, uh, I published a book called Platform Leadership with a doctoral student, Annabelle Gower. And um, our primary case was Intel. So we had looked at a number of companies and, and wrote about several in that book, Microsoft, uh, Cisco, uh, actually Palm was one of our cases, NTT Docomo in Japan, um, the Linux group was another one. Uh, but we really felt that Intel had established uh, probably the best model for platform leadership, uh, having the best balance of being open but not completely open and um, being an essential technology to a lot of different companies but not closing out their ability or preventing their ability to innovate. And uh, so the Intel microprocessor line really filled a key platform uh, function, uh, first in the personal computer and then increasingly in other markets. And if you look at what Intel did to make that happen, there were lots of internal efforts, um, different applications development groups, different laboratories trying to work on making the PC more competitive. Uh, if you remember early on, the PC was not graphical. It didn't uh, handle um, uh, high-speed processing very well. It wasn't a very good communications device. Um, it didn't have things like plug-and-play or, or hibernation or couldn't handle Wi-Fi. All these kinds of features really came out of efforts that Intel led uh, with partnership of a lot of other companies uh, to really make the personal computer into a, a multi-purpose platform for computing and communications, not only in the PC age, but the internet age. So, so we really do think that Intel has done a great job there. Uh, it also really led the way in having uh, a bunch of initiatives to work with outside firms such as Intel Ventures, uh, which invests in companies that are building technologies or products or offering services that enhance um, computing or make particular use of Intel technologies. I should also mention though that the downside of almost any platform company, no matter how successful they are, is that uh, it's hard to move on to the next platform. So we do think, again, this comes back to the flexibility principle I talked about in my Staying Power book. But platforms have to evolve and they need to evolve somewhat incrementally if, if the evolution is too disruptive, um, probably um, other companies will come in. That will be the opportunity. Um, so Intel has been there, but um, when we look at uh, the world of computing today, it, it's, um, it's actually dominated by smartphones. Uh, many more smartphones are shipped each year than personal computers are shipped, and smartphones um, have problems with battery life and power requirements and Intel over time has developed very complex microprocessors that can do a very wide range of things and the, the downside of that is uh, um, they require a lot of power. So for example a small company in England called ARM has uh, um, been developing for 25 years or so, reduced instruction set uh, microprocessors that use much less power. And they have been widely adopted for things like smartphones and, and net, net book computers. And um, so that's a big challenge for Intel. So Intel, again, is trying to um, simplify its designs and compete in that market. So again, uh, we do think Intel is probably the best example of an open but not completely open. And, uh, and uh, innovation encouraging platform company, but it, it has its uh, limitations.